Hey, Reefers, this is a tank. We're the two gay Reefers. Hey, Reefers, here we are. We're back for an in depth Reefzilla update. Tell me it's going to be in depth. In depth, yes. Tell me it's going to be in depth. In depth. <laughs> yeah, doing another in-depth Reefzilla update. Haven't done one specifically looking at Reefzilla for a while. We've done a lot about Reefzilla, but not actually showing you the tank. And we're really excited because the tank's looking really good. Yeah, things are slowly starting to come together with Reefzilla. The corals are starting to look healthier and happier, um, even growing a little bit and everything seems to be stable. So we've been doing weekly 10%. 80 liters at a time. We've been doing that for six weeks now, I believe. And it really has stabilized Reefzilla and really has reduced all the problems that we've had and everything's super, super stable. Uh, good thing is that our ALK has even settled down a lot. So, Calcium reactor is probably something we're not going ahead with at the moment because yep. our water changes are basically holding the elk steady, which is nice. Yep. So obviously we'll keep the calcium reactor. It's there when we need it at the, at the moment. Reef Siddler doesn't need a calcium reactor. Um, it's definitely a massive overkill for the amount of coral we've got in there at the moment and for the amount of supplements yep. that, it's used, that, the, that the tank's using. So. We're just going to hold off on the, on the calcium reactor for a while. We'll probably put a, a dosing pump on there uh, to, to dose a little bit of elk and a little bit of calcium magnesium when we need it. At the moment, what are you dosing? Probably once or twice a week? Once or twice a week of elk, and that's about all. I test alkalinity every single day, uh, every night, roughly the same time, give or take half an hour, depending on traffic. We're getting sort of around the, the 8 to 8.5. Consistently. Consistently. It doesn't seem to go anything below the 8. Uh, and to be honest, like eight to maybe once in the last three weeks, and it never goes over 8.5, and once again, that's probably once in the last three weeks. So yeah. it seems to be very consistent. I am a bit slack in doing the other tests, the, the magnesiums and all, and the calcium and of stuff. It's just, I just don't have the time physically to do it. Uh, so we are gonna take a water sample up to Nick's shortly. We are heading there after we finish shooting this video, and uh, get him to do some water tests for us, and we'll, we'll film that while we're there. And we'll see what we've got, yeah. I'm sure the results will be okay. <laughs> and of course, going to Nick's, we had to pick up some corals. <laughs> told him not to. He told, told me to wait. Told him to wait. Nick told him to wait. He doesn't we want to wait. We have waited. We've waited eight weeks. Not long enough. <laughs> it is long enough. We have put a few new corals in there and they're surviving pretty well. Everything's looking looking good. We've also been combating algae issues as you've seen in a previous video. The seven steps we took in that video we've actually put into practice and they've actually been working. I think the biggest one was that we were overfeeding the fish. So our algae from the top half of the tank has cleared up really nicely. The fish are actually doing their job. They're actually chomping at algae. Basically what happens when you don't beat them four blocks twice per day. Yeah. Shut up. I'm an overfeeder. <laughs> Our fish have been nice and healthy still, even on their reduced food level. Um, obviously they're getting that supplement algae in the, into their diet, which is nice. They are still nice, fat and healthy.
shut down the Jar Reef for now. So the Jar Reef has been neglected for the last probably six months, but in its neglect, it's kept some frags that we had previously in Reefzilla safe and growing. They've actually looked pretty good, haven't they? Yep. Is that all I get? Yep. Well, I told Darren to leave them in, in the jar for a little bit longer and just give Reef still another week or two, but no. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that. So most of the frags are rather small, so they are like that big. So smaller than a, fra a small frag plug. But I'm really happy to say that they've been in here about a week now and they're actually looking really nice and healthy. And there's a lot of zoas, we've got some leptastria, some leptoceras, even a little duncan frag, because we lost most of our duncan. But it's really nice to have a bit more colour and variety in the tank and looking forward to actually filling up the tank again with coral. It's been so long. Yep. <laughs> so, yay. Good for the bank bombs. Yes, it has been. So we'll go through a nice tour of the tank and show you exactly what we put in the tank. So this is Reefzilla as of today. It's actually been about two or three weeks since we filmed the rest of the video. And Reefzilla has just gone from strength to strength. It's getting better and better with each passing week. Now I'm even going to show you a bit of a side view because we don't do this very often and we haven't really shown off the new aquascape really either. So as you can see on the side, it's quite a different aquascape. There's arches all the way through the middle of it. We have a lot of new corals and the fish are looking happier than ever. So let's go through a few things. First of all, we've got the Gorgonians up the top. Now these are photosynthetic Gorgonians. They're quite large and absolutely love them. They give a lot of height to Reefzilla and really make a difference while we're waiting for any SBS we're putting up the top to grow and get some height. The fish actually like it as well. I'll give you a quick shot of the back wall. Yes, it is green, but it's not furry. We've actually got rid of most of the algae. There's a little bit here and there, like on the overflow and the uh, uh, return valves. But other than that, a lot of it has disappeared. And that's just by following our previous video on how to get rid of algae. Down the bottom now, this is one of the best new corals that we've got. This is a huge cataphilia or elegance coral. As you can see, it's brilliant neon green. It is absolutely huge. As you can see from the top down there, it actually wraps around the corner of this rock quite nicely. So really glad we picked this up. Up the top we have a few little frags from our SPS jar, so we rescued those. The one I really like is our Dallas Coral. So it is like the Barley Green Slimer. Really looking forward to this colouring up and getting huge. Okay, going back around the front, our centerpiece of the tank is obviously our clam. So this is a Ningaloo clam from Western Australia. We nearly lost it, stayed shut for months, ended up being the cleaner wrasse. Once we worked that out, within an hour it opened up to this beauty. Like, there's Mr. Pinky for size. You can't really fault this clam. On the side of the clam we have put a small frag of some zoas. There is actually a bit of goniopora in there as well. So every now and then that peeks out. Down here we've got sort of a lobo corner. Now they are a little bit sad looking and that's mainly because a hey, bugs likes to pick at them sometimes, which is why we lost a head or two off the green one there. But they receded when we had all our tank issues. 
This one, however, has really bounced back. As you can see, he's nice and puffy now. Up here, we have the Duncan that we saved from the bigger colony. As you can see, they're just heads at the moment. They're, s they're starting to actually grow back over the skeleton that's there. Up the top here, we have a purple Leptoceros, I think. Might be a purple Monty, actually, I'm not quite sure. Next to that is a little frag, acro frag that we got. It's seen better days when it came into our tank. Okay, up the top here, we've got two lovely little acro frags. They've already started to color up and put on some growth, especially around the base. But the one I can really say for sure that is actually growing, the spotted purple frag. That acro is a lovely pale purple colour when it grows out. And as you can see, it has actually touched the rock there and started to base onto the rock, which is really lovely to see. Okay, here we've got some nice utter chaos sowers that were donated by a fellow reefer. They're actually going to grow out onto an old Duncan skeleton there. But underneath that is a fluoro green hammer. This hammer here has, it sometimes has really good days, sometimes has bad days. It has receded quite a bit, but it is looking better than it had been. Okay, here's our cocoa worm. This is the third time that it has actually lost heads and regrown them. They're coming back better than ever. Here we have the beautiful blasto colony. We've got one trachophilia at the front. There is another one behind that that was in Gordon's tank and wasn't doing well. It has nearly fully recovered and reattached to the skeleton now, so really promising. Now this whole bottom section here is going to be a garden. So we've got Goniapora, we've got a few Montes, we've got Zoas, Duncan, Alveopora, Leptoceros, even a Bowerbanky. Now the Bowerbanky here had receded quite a lot with our dramas with the tank. As you can see, it's really puffy now and starting to connect back up nearly. We've got a lovely purpley pink Lobo here. Haven't really seen one like this before. Haven't really seen any coral of that color, to be honest. It's really, really cool. Here we have an acro. It had started STNing, so it started with one tip and then a couple of tips and then multiple tips. So I just went nut, nah, just fragged it up and stuck some to a new rock. Got a couple of other frags dotted around the tank near the back, just to, as backups. Down here we have a bleached torch. Now, this bleached torch is actually from the super secret coral wholesaler. He gave one to Nick once that was bleached and when it colored up, it was quite a beautiful torch. I think it had gold and green in it. So fingers crossed this one does the same. We've got a Symphilia up the back there. That has actually regained a lot of color. It had paled out and had started receding, but now since we've started on the Red Sea Salt, it is actually nice and puffy again, and it has hints of red in the outside, which is what its original color was. We've got a nice big dash over there, so it's coming back as well, looking quite nice. It still hasn't expanded as big as it was when we first bought it, but fingers crossed. This is my sort of acclimation graveyard over here at the moment. We've got a nice orange Monty on the bottom. It has some nice blue polyps in there. We've got an unnamed acro there. It's looking a bit pale at the moment, but I thought I'd put it on the sand to acclimate to the light. And up behind the dash, we've got that purple acro that was RTNing what's left of the main colony and hopefully we'll see if that actually comes good as well. Overall, really happy with how we're going.
We also want to thank everyone for sticking with us through the last six to eight months where it has been a bit tough. Thank you to all our loyal followers out there. Uh, we really, really appreciate every single one of you. Yes, we do. We're also thinking about doing live videos once, once a week, once every couple of weeks. If you're interested in something like that, let us know in the comments below. We don't know what to talk about, but if you just want to see us sit here and chat to you, let us know. Yeah. But anyway, hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, like, comment, and subscribe. Like, comment, and subscribe. Like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, be excellent to each other and keep it salty, everyone. Bye for now. See you guys. Hey, something.